Well, Gidget's on the screen. Hello and welcome back to Our Wonderland in Act 5, Video 5 of Act 5. I don't even know why I'm going with this introduction. Jerry leads us through the rapidly darkening woods, pausing every few minutes to survey the parameter. His ears twitching. If not far, though. Sorry, it's not far. We reach a clearing with a strangely conspicuous stump surrounded by a strangely conspicuous patch of brush. What's the whisper is all of its own conspicuousness then? And Jerry goes straight up to it and gives the thing a solid knock of his foot. It pops open. Come on, on then. He gestures towards us before hopping inside the newly revealed passage. God, if this turns into some kind of silence of the land, <laughs> oh gosh, uh, it'll be fine, probably. Only with rabbits, silence of the rabbits, and it'll be fine. Rabbits wearing human suits, that's like the opposite of a furry. Can to get in the rabbit stump hole, <laughs> stump hole, a uh, rabbit, sorry, not rabbit. God, God, this is fine, I'm going, I'm going down the hole. Yep. It's not the first hole we've fallen down into. Am I right or am I right? <laughs> the tree hole? Anyways, this is also not the first tree hole we've fallen into. The ladder is a bit tricky to navigate. One of those rope ones that constantly attempts to twist away from your reaching foot. But we make it down in one piece, the three of us gazing around our new environs as our remaining squadron of Iggy's continues to descend behind us. It's... Larger than I expected it would be. Is that some kind of underground network? And almost homely? A great big cave carved out of the dirt but lined with mosses and roots and hanging vegetalia. And carving around the path underfoot, so ebbing and flowing with the rhythm of the land. At the end is a small opening that appears to lead out. Onto some, sorry, onto sort of moonlit overlook. Built into the cliff, then? I follow off the Genzu and Gidget, my hand on a swivel as I take in the beds of brush and leaves, the boulder like tables with plates of breads and wooden stains or steins of frothy beverages. And the rabbits, because there's certainly no lack of them all around us and staring at us as we make our way through the dimly lit path leading down the cave center. More rabbits. Some of them are lounging on their beds, feet perched on knees and ears at rest. Some of them are gathered round tables and partaking of victuals, engagement stories or rackiest card games. Or ruckiest card games. And still others are exercising. But perhaps training would be the better word, yeah, given their cobbled together punching bags and target boards. I wonder if there's going to be a dartboard with all of them on it. One of them even boasts in a rather crudely drawn, yet still recognizable likeness of all of them is keenly a tear. You just had to do that, didn't you? I get so absorbed in staring agog at my surroundings, sorry, but I don't even notice how far behind the others I've gotten. Yeah, until one of the rabbits hops down from his perch right beside me, nose twitching, eyes narrowed. I jump backwards with a swallowed squeak, then give a little jog to catch back up with Gidget and the others. At the center of the room is a round table. A knight's of a round table? Seemingly cut from the stump of an enormous tree. It's currently covered with an assortment of maps and papers. Are they playing an RPG tabletop game and there are knights of them? <laughs> eh, knights of a round table, am I right or am I right? And to the right of it is a sunken fire pit, cozy and crackling as a light dances across the walls. When Jerry reaches the table, uh, so yeah, the table, a few of the rabbits who'd been pawing over documents stand up straight putting a set of swift salutes. Obviously, Jerry is very well respected around these parts. Obviously, because he's got his red cape while the others have got green. Jerry gestures towards us with a flick of his ears. Get them some beds for the night and food. He glances back. 
and we make momentary eye contact. I stand up a little straighter. Oh, and that one needs... That one's gonna need a medic. So, yes, sir. The rabbits start to interaction, wrapping blankets around our shoulders, fetching us mugs, ushering us towards the fire. It all happens quite quickly, to a point that it makes my head well. Though, just as I'm about to sit down with the others, another set of paws finds me, guiding me past the pit and towards another corner of the cave and what appears to be an infirmary of sorts. They're not particularly gentle with me. I mean, they are huge rabbits. Splayed out on one of the wooden cots as they yank the dried on goes off my shoulder and get to work. First cleaning it, then searing it with an alcohol then applying some sort of goopy ointment from a tube before finally going in to replace the stitches. It hurts, but not as much as I expect it should. It's painful, but not quite as painful as I thought it would be. A result of whatever they used, perhaps, it still makes for an uncomfortable time, though, and I find myself groaning in spite of myself, tears springing to the corners of my eyes as I grip the side of the cot. By the time they're finished and have replaced the gals, I'm out of breath and out of sorts. But at least I'm no longer bleeding. One of the rabbits rewraps a bag, sorry, the blanket around my shoulders before giving my hair a semi-encouraging tussle. Up, he gestures. We'll check it again tomorrow. But right. I pull the edges of the blanket in tighter around my frame, being all of a sudden shy. I'm handed a mug and shoot away. It tingles against my fingertips, warm. I start shuffling back towards the fire. Only to give another half jump at the sight of Jerry leaned against the wall only a few paces away, just staring at me. What? My voice cracks. Jerry's nose twitches. He hacks something up in the back of his throat, spits it on the ground. I glance down at the resulting glimmer of ooze. Finally, without saying anything else, he steps forward, extending his hand. I stare at it. He stares at me. Not knowing what else to do, I take it with an awkward shake. For, uh, for all that, you know. Hmm. I'm thinking that Jerry is that, uh, reference to our fantastic Wonderland, in which was, um, recommended to play, but not an absolute necessity, before going into arc 5 of this game. Because, uh, a rabbit's got to do what a rabbit's got to do, you know. Another blink. He just keeps shaking my hand. But we can put all of that behind us, yeah? What the hell are you talking about? Jerry jerks his hand away angrily. Front teeth gnashing. I'm trying to apologize to you. You belongering ignoramious. <laughs> that was an apology? I thought it was pretty damn clear. Exactly, yeah. Shaking my hand and making vague allusions to things I barely remember. Jerry flicks his head away with a growl. I can see him biting down on his bottom lip. Look, just... I did some things I regret. Am I proud of them? No. He pauses. Actually, yes. <laughs> okay, that's precise the point. The point now is that things have gotten effed up beyond all reason. And it'd be in our mutual interest for both our parties to stop this runaway train of unhindered horrors before our tickets are stamped through to the last stop. I return to my abject blinking, just holding my mug against my chest. Joey watches me for a moment, then presses his lips together, his ears curling in on themselves in crinkly embarrassment. Then he turns away. So, so yeah, that was all. We'll... Discuss strategy tomorrow. Get some rest. Then he twists on his heels and goes storming off. There's obviously something that he clearly remembers, but we don't. And we're not acknowledging the writing of a wall. I simply stare at him. So I uh, stare after him. At a loss. Was he? Blink again. Yeah, blinking many times. Then shake my head. I'm still woozy from the operation. Some food and rest by the fire would do, would do me a world of good right about now. So with a final glance at Jerry's retreating form, I head towards the center of the cave and the flickering light of the fire beyond. Is Gidget and Genzu there? I still don't fully trust Gidget, by the way, but that would not be in our best interests. 
We spend the night feasting, laughing, warming our bones with frothy ale and fireside jollity. Despite the initial dubious reception, the rabbits take to us immediately, the Iggy's especially. Once they've been patched up, they join the rabbit card games, the drinking competitions. Even part. Wait, how can the Iggy's partake in the drinking competitions? They don't have any mouths! Even partaking in a few bouts of dagger darts with the targets on the wall. Uh, again, so would like to put up a picture of all of them on one of those um, <laughs> dagger dart, dart boards. <laughs> and the rabbits themselves can't get enough of it. Hopping and hollowing as the stakes and their levels of inebriation rise. I feel the warmth of the alcohol rise to my own cheeks. I hope you're not biting on them. Watching one of the rabbits relay an exuberant story of one of their many battles against the king's men, as they call their more violent brethren. Jerry even joins in towards the end, insisting that the injury he'd succumbed to in the story had been the result of a certain rabbit named Leroy jumping the gun, which launches all of them into a ruckiest debate. But I lose track of about five minutes in. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's like being in a university lecture or school, and it's like um, I'm behind about five sentences. Could you repeat what, what was going on five sentences ago? And everyone stares at you like, why aren't you keeping up, bruh? But it doesn't really matter at that point. I'm mostly just tuning out the words, focusing instead on the warm hum of voices, the crackle of the fire, the warm tingle running up and down my skin, the way Gensu's hand keeps finding my shoulder whenever he laughs, squeezing it in time with his mirth, his smile bright and contagious in the flickering light, the way Gidget keeps checking to see if I need anything, refilling my empty mug, grabbing one of the pokers of fire-roasted mushrooms so I don't need to get up. I feel safe, secure, just bear with my friends. Well, two out of the f many friends you have. Surrounded by warmth and laughter, I let my gaze drop to the fire, just staring at the dancing embers. And when things finally start to die down, I feel a sort of contented tiredness settle me over. Settle over me, sorry. I pull my blanket in around my shoulders as I wander around, trying to figure out where to put my empty mug. One of the rabbits must have noticed my confusion before he... So because he takes it for me with a somewhat astonished smile, telling me I can just leave, left it wherever. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh. I respond, suddenly sheepish. Then watch him walk away with it, feeling as though I've just parted with something dear. I give my head a shake. God, I need to sleep. You know, just keep the mug on you. may never know when you need it next. Either for another hot drink or for... um. Smashing someone over the head with, particularly a um, an Orlam guard or something like that. I start back towards the other end, the small section of beds we've been given on the other side of the fire pit. Around me, rabbits are yawning and stretching and lounging across their beds, and I spy Iggy's doing the same up ahead, each of them carefully and painstakingly preparing their beds for the night ahead. What are the other Iggy's are feeling? Not the ones with us, but the ones back at the manor. There's something cosy about the sight. All of us settling down for a long winter's nap. Or something. Though this summons a pain of disquietude in my stomach. If only that were all we were settling down for. Not whatever awaits us in that castle and the forest beyond. I press my lips together with a quiet sigh. Then Spock Gensu is sitting on his back against the far wall. He's curled up in his blanket, watching the Iggy's in wild bemusement as he leans against the earthen surface of the cave. I glance around for Gidget. Only I didn't see them. Not on any of the beds. Not helping the rabbits tending to the fire pit. Not in the infirmary corner. Where I see a final lingering Iggy emerge with fresh bandages passed across his forearm. I blink, tilt my head just like one of the Iggy's do, then turn in the direction of a glow of moonlight, 
the opening at the end of the cave, leading out to the overlook and the sea of trees and stars beyond. I catch a glimpse of blonde hair just past the edge of the tunnel. Ah, that must be... Jared, no, it must be Gidget. Another blink. I turn my gaze back towards Genzu, then again towards Gidget. Hmm... I wonder if this is another important choice. Well, I don't really think about either of these two when um, when going forward. But then again, do I really want to go into the more straight and narrow? I'm going to feel like I'm going to have plus 5 HP if this was an RPG game. If I just go straight to bed rather than talk with one of the two. Oh, my mind! What do I do? I'm just going to go straight to bed. I scratch on my calf with the side of my foot, then yawn. I'm not really being up to any kind of interaction right now, to be honest. This day has been long enough as is. I kind of just want to curl up on my bed and sleep. So with a slight trudge in my step, I make my way through the rows of beds and their accompanying ickies. Mine is the bunk above Genzu's, and as I start up the ladder... Genzu glances up from a spot underneath, eyes wide and blinking. You hear the sack, Higgs? Yeah. I say with a peek down through the rounds, hoping I don't come off as too standoffish. Just tired is all. Don't blame you. Then after a slight pause, have a good night though, yeah? You too. We're gonna need it. We've got a long day ahead of us. The words buzz on my lips as I pull myself the rest of the way up and into my bunk. It's soft beneath my back, a cushionary cloud of leaves and soft brush, and as it hit, so and at its head, a pillow with, sorry, a pillow. I don't know where I'm going with the sentence. It's such a simple, like, string of words to say. A pillow my head practically sinks into. It feels wonderful, and as I lie there, just staring up at the ceiling overhead. Life on the fire dancing across the grooves in the dirt. I feel some of the built-up tension in the back and shoulders begin to ease. Finally, some time to myself. Some time to just live here, in the quiet. It's incredibly calming. The continued crackle of the fire pit. The chirp of crickets from somewhere within the surrounding dirt and vegetation. This is too quiet! the soft, warm light enveloping my body like a soothing veil. I let my eyes flutter closed, just letting the quietude settle over me. It doesn't take much longer after that for my consciousness to drift away and sleep to overtake me. And sleep I shall do. I hope for once anyways I shall sleep, but I'm getting one of these, oh, I barely slept. I had my eyes closed for like about 8 hours, but I only managed to get like 30 seconds of sleep. I awake the next morning to the smell of something cooking over the fire. It's a delightful smell that makes the tip of my nose twitch. Obviously, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. And when I creak my eyes open, I see soft sunlight filtering in from the back tunnel blanketing the cave in warm light. I push myself up to a seat with a groan, glance about. The rabbits are already up and moving, scurrying around and doing, well, who knows what, really. But they're quite active, with a good number of them around the fire pit holding half-eaten skewers and drinking mugs of what I hope is coffee, because goddamn I could really use some coffee right about now. Stifling a yawn, I make my way down the ladder, Nearly bumping into a scuttling Iggy as I start towards the centre of the cave. And for some odd reason, saying the word Iggy or Iggies in comparison to another Iggy is somehow normalised now. Like I'm not weirded out by it. It's just sort of felt like they've been here for so long. Once equipped my own mug and plate of morning cosmetables, I wandered towards the fire. Consumables? I wandered towards the fire hoping to catch a glimpse of a familiar face so I don't have to stand awkwardly and eat. Or, even worse, make the walk of shame back to my bunk and eat there. Sleep well? Jerry! I nearly jump out of my shoes at the voice. Then twist around to see Jerry standing next to me, 
arms crossed over his chest. How on earth is a seven foot tall rabbit so goddamn stealthy? Well, they have to do what they have to do to survive. I guess. I, I say before sinking my mouth into my coffee. Good. <sighs> You're gonna need it. He gives me a chest pat on the shoulder before striding away with a curse. Real! And heading for the main table. I watch him for a moment, just blinking in silence. Then return to my breakfast of fried potatoes and eggs. What awaits in the grand battle plan against the mighty Orlum? Once breakfast is over, though, things began. So begin moving quickly. The table of documents is cleared, only to be replaced with a single large map. Where'd you get all this intel from, Jerry? How'd you know where the enemy's positions is? And what? <laughs> Gensu's like, I have a question. But also, I noticed the bandages on his legs. Oh yeah, from the swimming. Uh, the table documents is cleared only to be replaced with a single large map. Sometimes I forget I've already read the sentence. And around the table, rabbits begin to gather. Jerry ahead and conferring with what I can only guess are his top men. The remaining rabbits are no less active. They take to their armor and weapon on masses, mending holes and rips and sewing new layers of hardened plates into the joints, sharpening daggers and spearheads. A few of them even carving darts and arrows out of hard wood bark, sorry, hard wood bark of the assortment of long range options. I'm impressed to say the least. Though I'm not sure what wouldn't impress me at this point. Just that if you had asked me my expectations before making this final Wonderland excursion, how do you even know this is your final time here, Iggy? This could definitely well be just the start of, well, countless cycles. And you're just like, what, 1% of the way through all of the cycles? I would 100% have not said a rebel army of underground rabbits ready to wade into battle at a moment's notice. But here we are. I feel a bit out of my league. I don't know enough about the turf, the enemy, the current situation to provide much in the way of strategic advice. But I try my best to follow along with the rapid decisions happening around the round table as Jerry and his band of merry rabbits beleaguer the pros and cons of each assault on Castle Orlam. I just thought of something. I wonder if, later on, if Jerry somehow dies, then Orlam somehow returns to his senses? I'm not too sure now. Gidget proves better than... So, yeah, proves better than me at speaking on our needs as the only ones not seven feet tall at the table. In fact, they seem completely in their, their element. On their feet, next to Jerry, and debating points on entry based on known rabbit concentration areas. A term Jerry and company keep, kept throwing around as KRCAs. There's something quite ritual about the site, about the way they expertly rebuck ideas that would have required the three of us to move at speeds of up to 60 miles an hour to keep on having our heads lopped off. While next to me, Genzo keeps coughing and making wisecracks about everything from rabbit mating rituals to Jerry's this unnatural fixation on getting inside Orlum. I mean, Orlum's this castle. This one receives a slap across the nose from Jerry's this palm moving stick, which I'm not surprised by. It's all quite a lot, really. But somehow, between the group, a plan begins to develop, and I'm just sitting there watching. Not, con not contributing at all. <laughs> and as I watch Jerry move the little wooden pawns that represent us across the map again for the umpteenth time, a realisation realization hits me, sorry. This might actually... Stop it! What do you mean, might? It will! Does it seem impossible? Mildly? Does it seem dangerous? Absolutely. Incredibly. <laughs> but by golly, do the cogs seem to be turning in the right direction because for once... No one says a thing. Everyone just stares at the board. Jerry taps his stick against his shoulder, gaze flickering across the table. 
Well, he finally says, voice rumbling in the base of his throat. Commence operation bottoms up, I guess. Why is it bottoms up? I know you got to give these operations a code name or something like that. But bottoms up, it's a little bit unthinkable, would you say, the least. The skewers, sorry, sewers. We're going in from the sewers. There's perhaps some mild irony in this given how many times we've likely exited via the sewers in some form or another. But I try not to think about it. Yes, the enemy won't expect us to come infiltrated into the castle from where they poop. Instead, I focus on my final preparations. My final med check in the infirmary. My final weapons check with a rather exuberant rabbit named Lemmy. I settle on a small retractable dagger under the assumption I'd injure myself on anything else. Well, it's always good to have some kind of weapon on you in something like this, but I don't think we can trust you with your two-handled spear. Two-handed spear, sorry. Hmm. My final meal with a noticeably tensor crew. Dinner is a giant pot of pine squirrel stew. My final emphatic shoulder touch from Gidget as they tell me everything's going to be fine. Just fine. My final emphatic back slap from Genzu as he tells me we're all going to die. <laughs> Damn. Horrible, aren't you? Before just as quickly retracts it and fervently apologizing upon seeing the color drain from my face. What do you mean we're all going to die? And then once the sun begins its descent towards the horizon, we're off. The smaller battalions leave first, one after another splitting off, disappearing into the woods like whispers in the night. Iggy's perched on Rabbit's shoulders, tasks with recon work, sentry work, and the like. Do the Rabbits even know how to communicate with the Iggy's? Everyone aware of their part in the plan? Iggy is like, uh, what am I doing again? Until it leaves only us, Genzu, Gidget, and I. And Jerry and his closest men, I guess. We're to occupy the appropriately named Keen's Point until everyone is in position and our turn in the campaign has arrived. Jerry squats down next to me, saying nothing. And I must look at him with the blankest, most confounding expression in the world. Because he snorts in impatience. He is twitching. It'll take us an hour to get there at your speed. You want me to get on? Well, I don't want you to throw us a me a surprise 21st birthday bash now, do I? Don't you get sassy with him, you overgrown tin chin. <laughs> oh, not this again, Genzo. We've got a plan ahead of us, and all you keep thinking about is trying to <laughs> put your own neck in front, okay? Which only makes Jerry's fur bristle further. You want me to leave all you hairless monstrosities behind? You orchant jackass. Iggy, get on the giant rabbits, man, please. I see Gidget's eye twitch. S Sorry. I say it nothing and no one. Jerry halves and resettles into his squat. And I attempt to climb on, jumping a bit so I could wrap my arms around his neck. He pops back up immediately. And I nearly slide straight off. Jerry grabs my bony knees and yanks me so tight against his back I just about up my insides out onto the grass and gives a jerk of a nod at the others who subsequently kneel down as I watch Genzu and Gidget latch themselves onto their own rabbits' chariots. Oh dear, I feel particularly bad for one who has to carry Genzu. Whether it's the tightness of my grip or the way my arms are shaking, it must be obvious I'm a bit rattled. Because Jerry throws me a quick glance, and I see his eyes soften for just a moment. I won't let you fall off. I blink. I attempt to process the delivery of this information. But I'm not given a chance, because in the next second, the group is ready, and Jerry makes a little click in the back of his throat. Then, we are off. Leaps! I'm barely able to register what's happening at first. My head is thrown back as wind launches itself straight into my face, into my nasal cavity, sending my hair flying and my glasses nearly straight off my nose. Why, I can't even see. No, wait, my glasses are still on. I still can't see. 
in a motion that's more instinctive panic than anything else, I slam my face into the back of Jerry's neck, clinging to him like a leech. I can't see where we're going. Can only feel it. Dodging in and out between trees, leaping over brush, sailing so smoothly across the rough turf, you think his feet never even touch the ground. It's exhilarating, to be honest. It's like being on a very fast ride at your local amusement park. And here is the <laughs> is the park going down the roller coaster. Not going up it, but going down it. And once my initial terror has begun to abate, my heart no longer beats like a jackhammer in my ears. I ease up on my grip. The wind whips at my hair like that of a dog sticking its head out of the window. But I rest my cheek against the fur of Jerry's neck. My, closing my eyes against rapidly passing landscapes so he keep from getting dizzy. I can feel him beneath me. The way his muscles pull and snap with the swift movements. The sudden turns. I'm not sure I've ever felt simultaneously so out of control and in the control of my life. It's contrary. Careening wildly yet knowing I'm still get, I'll still get to where I need to go. It's a fascinating feeling. I entertain the thought of looking back, searching for any son of the others, but decide against it when my stomach gives an inelegant gurgle. Best to just not move, perhaps. I'm not sure how long we run. Ten minutes? Twenty? Well, it won't be an hour or several if we moved at human speeds. The ground we cover must be substantial, though. At some point, I notice a shift in our trajectory. An ever so slight incline, and Jerry begins to slow, the trees passing by at less dizzying speeds as the veil of overhead leaves begin to thin. Then we emerge. There it is, the sight of the bastion. Jerry goes skidding to a hole just beyond the line of trees, and I instinctively clutch every inch of my body against him to keep from continuing my forward flight. He simply stands there a second, waiting. Then another rabbit bursts from the bush, and another. The rest of our group appears one after another. Jerry nods, another click in his throat, before wandering off towards a nearby outcropping of rocks. When he props a squat to let me down, I promptly fall straight back on my ass. <laughs> God, I bring hands on my head, my muscles trembling. When I try to pull myself back to my feet, I simply stumble in the opposite direction, landing with a painful thud on my sh Oh, no, I hope it's not the bad shoulder. An unbecoming groan racks my frame. Iggy! Gidget starts towards me, their hand outstretched. Before their knees crumple beneath them. While behind them, Genzo hasn't even left, on <laughs> left the ground, just staring up the night sky as he moans something about his bones melting. I suppose it must be extra hard for his legs, considering his swim. Jerry and other rabbits ignore us, making their way purposefully towards the rocks and hunkering down behind them. I finally managed to push myself up to a, lawn, sorry, to a seat long enough to collect my bearings. We're on a small hill just outside the threshold of the forest. It's dark now, quite dark, with nothing but the sound of crickets and cadders puncturing punctuating the silence sorry. I start clawing sorry crawling over towards where Jerry and the other rabbits are conferring by the rocks. Then stick my head curiously over the nearest stony barricade. Mm. The gasp leaves my mouth before I can stop it. What are we doing, Iggy? There it is. Towering at the top of a sloping expanse like a needle piercing the sky. A black, shadowy stronghold outlined in brilliant contrast against the thick med sorry, medley of dark clouds overhead. The castle. I shrink back just a bit, stomach giving an unceremonious gurgle. Seeing it there. Seeing it there right in front of me. I suddenly made it real again. And all those memories I'd shoved temporarily beneath the surface of my brain so I'd just so I'd be able to function or begin to bubble back up like a slowly burning cauldron. I swallow hard. Jerry pops his head up over the box next to me. He is twitching. There she is. A ghastly sight, no. 
Quite indeed, a ghastly sight. For different reasons, I'm honest. You could say that. But her reign of terror all this land shall soon come to an end. Once the heartless hellion occupying her peak is slain. I blink, glance at Jerry. Hmm. We are not going to kill him. We're not kidding him, you know. Jerry ignores me, instead turning back towards his fellow rabbits in continued consolation. And I take this opportunity to gaze out across the umbral expanse of land separating us from our target. I see the castle town. How many times had Genzu and I walked those streets? Back then, it had been devoid of life. Now it's devoid of, well, everything. The houses that once lined the cobbles sit in piles of rubble. The roads are strewn with under, uh, sorry, unidentifiable bric-a-brac. And the once tinkering, sorry, tingling fountains turn into a dank pool of muck that bubbles and hisses with acidic pop, sorry. Past the town itself, I see the path winding up towards the castle. Its once tidy grasses are now grown over the sides and rising up between the bricks. Even the trees themselves appear to be weeping, sloshed over like heaving willows with their leaves scrapping the earth. But there's little movement to be seen in the dark, nothing but the occasional lurking shadow moving between the murky depths of the ruins. According to Jerry's man, though, this place is a breeding ground for rabbit soldiers, sorry. Rabbit soldiers. <laughs> shoulders. Soldiers? That thought alone is enough to make the hair on the back of my neck stand up like lightning rods as my eyes rove the parameter. And Genzu crawls up next to me, and I hear him let out a little oomph as he pushes himself up onto the rock in order to say... Again, Iggy is looking very nervous. Makes your dawn shrivel up like a California raisin. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's certainly not instilling much confidence. Guess that Blanco wasn't happy with a previous aesthetic. Not sadistic murder you in your sleep enough for the old pepper pocker people I eat to say. I roll my eyes. Not that he doesn't have a point, but Gidget rises up on my other side with a small grunt. Obviously, Gidget has not been here more times than we have. Seeing it is... Actually, actually, Gidget has been here a lot as a guest of honor, but not in the context of, um, like, Iggy and Genzu. Seeing it? So, sorry, seeing it is, indeed, a lot different than simply taking... Sorry, talking about it. Their brows furrow with a worried shudder. I only hope the plan will work. The plan will work. <laughs> As he comes along. Jesus, I know they're on our side, but why do they have to be so goddamn creepy sometimes? Genzu hisses. I heard that. Want me to say it louder? Let's review the plan again, shall we? Good, Gidget, good, good. Because Iggy here is not confident enough to break the mold. And I shoot them a smile of gratitude. <laughs> oh, Jerry. Yes, yes, the plan. Very good. Jerry's ears flick to the left, then to the right. And I see him peer out across the darkened plain. Stage one is already in motion if my ears don't deceive me. I blink. Stray my ears. But hear nothing. Is it? Yes, the two northbound squadrons have already begun their approach. They'll aggro the two KRCAs east of the main gate. That's when our long range unit will move into position in the bread box. Bread box? Gains with Snickers next to me. Jerry shoots him with a glare, but otherwise doesn't react. They'll provide cover for the first squad to begin their push towards the main gate. While they draw fire from any remaining units in town, our squad will circle around on the westward side, then cut left at the moat and follow in down to the sewer entrance. Neat, neat, sort of like a taunt. You'll be safe once you're inside. The bars are spaced too closely for us rabbits to get in, 
but you three should be able to slip inside without much trouble. I mean, two of you would. We'll, we'll shove Gensu in. Uh, I'm sorry, Gensu. Yeah, but that's... Oh, for goodness sakes! Gensu! Why are you like that? Yeah, but that's not the only thing you wish you could slip inside. I see Joey's eye twitch. But Gidget keeps the conversation moving. If we're lucky, there will be barely any rabbits left for, to notice us, let alone attack. Yeah, and if we're unlucky, there'll be a whole pestle of them waiting to sink their oversized bicepes into our line grease. All these complicated words! My stomach gurgles unceremoniously at the thought, and I flinch in spite of myself. If we're unlucky, we'll have Jerry and his squad to hold any surprise forces off until we reach for sewers. The thing I'll be trusting my life with a guy whose ears are longer than it Oh, for goodness sake, stop with the meandering, Genzo! And once you're inside... Start... Still, <laughs> Jerry starts his word punchy. Yes, once you're inside, you'll... We'll turn to look at him. He blinks. Actually, I've no idea what it's like inside. I was one of the first to leave. And that was before, well, all of this. I swallow. The spit getting stuck in my throat. If it's this bad on the outside... I'd say, what's the worst he could do except, well, we've seen the worst he could do and it ain't pretty. At any rate, I have the utmost faith in you. Once inside, you know what to do. Find our once and future king. Jerry flings his arms out. He is going ramrod straight and snuff him out once and for all. We're going to say it for a second time. We're not killing him. He's our dear friend, despite the fact that we're on opposite sides of a battlefield. We're not kidding him, you know. But Jerry ignores me again. Arms folding across his chest as he returns to listening for signs of our plan's progress. He pauses for a moment. Then reaches for something in his tunic. It's a small vial of sauce. And filled with a pale pink slope marinated in red soup. It takes me a moment to realise what I'm looking at. Is it a... Sewer slide option. Is that? My stomach twist turns. Oh, trail bomb. Je Jerry simply <laughs> simply even hands it to Gidget. Those things go gaga over this stuff. Oh, it's a sort of a magnet for rabbits. Gidget takes it, twists it back and forth between their fingers. We bottled a bunch back when your kind still populated this place. But it didn't last long after the hunting spree started. Jerry's eyes darken, and he pauses for a moment. Then his nose twitches. Anyway, it's a good bait. Quite potent. We'll get you out of a pinch if need be. But it won't last long. They'll notice pretty quick when there's nobody accompanying the gooey bit, so don't dwaddle. Thanks. Gidget tucks the vial away in the inner pockets of their shirt. Though I suppose I should say I hope we don't have to use it. Indeed. How come I don't get a nasty bowel bottle? Because we don't have that many left and I don't trust you. <laughs> uh, Jerry does have a point. Which just, make, which just makes Genzu pout. I let my gaze drop to the small retractable daggers attached to my belt loop. I hope I won't have to use it either. Also, with um, not being rude again, Sue, but with Gidget's and Iggy's frames, they'll have an easier time going through the bars where rabbits won't be able to do so otherwise. And um, yeah, we don't want to add any more thickness to Genzu. With a fun, I slide back down the side of a rock until my seat hits the grass. It's just thinking physically, logically, not fat shame or anything like that. So if that comes across as like that, then I do apologize. Suddenly, the plan that had seemed to make so much sense back in the cave feels like an impossible feat. Seeing that castle in the distance, all those feelings bubbling up inside my chest. You okay, Ix? Genzu slides down next to me with a cushy thwomp. Hmm. Gidget pops a squat on my other side, jaw taut. You worried about anything in particular? Besides hoping we don't all die, my voice crackles at the emphasis. I rub my eyes, thump mass sorry, thump massaging the bridge of my nerves. 
Not that we haven't before, many, many times, but it feels different this time. Yeah, I guess. It's true. This is the first time we've done this. Done any of this. Gidget muses. So it does feel significant somehow. Also, I guess I... I stop. Cringe. Let my gaze drop to the rocks below. I just hope there's something we can do. That he's not... Too far gone. Look, if Gidget was at a point where you feel that they were too far gone, then I'm sure as hell we can snuff all them from the depths of hell and bring him back up to the surface. Gens' face darkens at this. He grunts but doesn't say anything. Hands propped up on his knees as he picks idly at his thumbs. We'll do what we can. Gidget gives my shoulder a, reass a reassuring squeeze. We'll drag him out of our castle, kicking and screaming if we have to. This, though, does bring a smile to my face. And I feel a little bit of the anxiety squeezing my heart loosen. They've made contact. Jerry's voice snaps us back to attention. He's gone perfectly still, ears as straight as TV antennas searching for a signal. Gidget pushes himself, so himself back to their feet. Voice low. The Northern Squads? Jerry hums in infirmination. This is enough to bring me to my feet as well, despite the trembles in my knee. Sorry, tremble, tremble in my knee. Sorry about that. I can feel my heart picking up again. Like a steadily accelerating metronome in my chest. Genzo falls behind, though conspicuously silent and lacking his earlier vivacity. One of the other rabbits ducks down beside Jerry. His movements crisp. Long range units in position, sir. They've already had to drive back a few hostels. More stragglers than anticipated, then. Indeed. Jerry clicks the back of his teeth together. Not ideal, but we've dealt with worse. Does this mean we'll be going soon? I try to sound confident despite the wobble in my voice. Jerry ignores me, instead flickering his head in the direction of the town. The other rabbits seem to know what this means and go bounding off down the hill. Come on. Jerry says simply, then takes off after them. The three of us simply watch him go for a moment. The sight taking a moment to register. Then, Gidget goes running. With Genzu hot on the trail. And I have no choice but to scramble after them. Fingers and toes slightly numb from growing apprehension as I sprint down the hill and out across the field. It's a surreal feeling. Being out there in the middle of all that darkness. Nothing but the moon to guide my path as my heart races and my feet pound against the dirt. I can barely see my companions up ahead, which only worsens my dread. And I push my legs harder, whipping past grasses and bristles like a white-topped streak in the dark. We race across the entire field up to the buildings on the outskirts of town. I see the rabbits come to a halt behind what looks like the remains of a large shed, and I book it after them clenching my eyes shut as I put everything I can into the last leg of my sprint, then promptly trip a few, sorry, and fall a few feet away, going sliding across the gravel with a wince-inducing thud. Eggs! I hear Genzu hiss. Can see his paunchy shadows start towards me. Oh, but Jerry makes it there first, hauling me up single-handedly by the back of my shirt and carrying me towards the building. I barely have time to register what's happening before he's dropped me back to the ground and grabbing my wrist with a yank. You're staying with me. Get your goddamn hands. Do you want him to die? This stops Genzo in his tracks, exactly. And he steps back with a thwomp, fixing his hat. I sink somewhat shamefully back against the wall. Jerry's hand still clenched around my wrist bone. Jerry jerks back to peer around the side of a building. From my vantage point, I could see the grass turn to cobblestones only a few feet away, but not much else. In my mind, though, I could see the small, ca small castle town as though it were yesterday. The quaint yet empty streets. The fountain tinkling. So, yeah, tinkling in the central square. The air of disquietude hanging over everything like a dewy veil. I wonder what happened to the villagers in this timeline. They don't exist. This thought sends a shudder up my... Sp Wait a minute, hunting spree. So, 
There must have been some kind of um, extermination. I see Jerry's ears jerk left, right. His nose twitches. First squad is moving in, he simply says. Then turns back. Seems to realize how tightly he's gripping my arm and probably releases it with a jerk. Sorry. I shake my head silently, massaging my wrist. You've kind of got the vibe of a newborn kit. Gosh, this makes me blanch. It's kind of... But he doesn't flinch. Instead, turning his head away with a small cough, tips of his ears curling. I find myself at a bit of a loss, so I simply stand there, staring down at the small tuft of grass next to my feet. Anyway, we've got to get you to that castle in one piece. Hmm. So you can find that rattled blanket. Hmm. And silence him for good. He emphasizes this with a punch to his palm. We're not killing him. We're not killing him. I've just about had it at this point. Unable to stop myself, I stomp to my I stomp my feet on the ground, hands splayed in exasperation. This is get this is getting ridiculous. We're not killing him, you know. Jerry blanks at my outburst, but I'm not done. Orlam. Orlam is our friend. He I can feel moisture building up in the corner of my eyes. He, he needs our help. Needs us to to needs us to what? I don't know. I don't know what we have to do. But he's in there and he's hurt and it's our goddamn fault and 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 maybe I don't really know how I feel about him. Or any of this. But I care about him. I care about him a lot. And I just hope we we my hands go into fists, I grind my teeth together, but I ultimately let them fall with a defeated slump. It's silent for a moment. Then yeah, I get it. Jerry sniffs, rubs at his chin. Guess I've just seen a lot of my guys die, you know. So you have to forgive me on my words come out a bit harsher than intended. I bring a hand to the back of my neck, guilt buzzing along my hairline. Yeah. It's okay. We both have different perspectives after all. Jerry only sees uh, all of them as a source of all evil, where we see him as a, well, both a source of evil, but also our friend. My own feelings about the guy are complicated. Complicated, so complicated is a good word for it. The memories plaguing my head, some of them horrific, while others comforting. The feeling of his fingers in mine as we dance, the smile plain at his lips as he'd whispered things in my ears. The weight of him curled up against me. His fingertips. Ugh, I squeeze my eyes shut. Cheeks suddenly grown incredibly warm. But I shake my head with a flustered jerk. My memories of all are the most chaotic. Hard to piece together. Perhaps due to the stark just, just, juxtaposition of feelings being still. Or because I'd spent so long down here with him, this place does stuff to your head the longer you spend in it. You can say that again. I return to my gaze. So I return my gaze to Jerry, who's now just staring at me, brows arch. You go somewhere, Kit. Sorry, memories. You know, I give my hand a little wave as though it will somehow explain the. Armand Frias disarray sizzling in my thoughts. Guess I can't fault you for that. Got enough of my own. Ah, he's smiling. Jerry puts his hand on my shoulder. I think it's supposed to be some kind of reassuring pat, but the strength behind it feels about ready to snap my clavicle. To future memories, then. Yeah. And then, with a bit more gusto, yeah, future memories. Jerry looks like he wants to say something else. He even opens his mouth, but at, the, at the, that moment, something must catch his attention, because his ears give a twitch and he returns his attention to the side of a building. This time, even I can hear it. The far-off sounds of combat up in the town. Further up in the town. We grow silent. The whole lot of us huddled at the ready behind the shed, just waiting. Then, they're almost at the gate. Let's move. Jerry gives another click, and the other rabbits take off, back around the other side of the shed and disappearing into the night. Getting to engage a glance at each other, then at me. 
I turn an equally as bewildered look in Jerry's direction, who just stares at us blankly. Finally, What are you waiting for? Go! He flings his arms as though he's shooing us along. I'll take up the rear. Don't you get any weird words, Genzu, okay? This is enough to spur us into action. We take off. Running. Why is it always running? Because that's how we travel fast. I do better this time, though. Focusing myself. Focusing my attention. I go whipping by the buildings of the outskirts of town like a shadow in the night. Keeping the outlines of my companions in my sight. My lungs fight me every step of the way. But I push past it. Willing speed and strength into my legs. We come to a stop at another building a short distance away. Huddled in the dark. Silence. Then Barabbas in the lead jerks his head. And we're off again. Flying from a building to building. Staying in the shadows as much as possible. The sounds of combat are nearer now. I can hear them when we stop. Between my hurried breaths as I struggle to swallow oxygen. It sounds somewhat intense. Did the first squad really meet with so much resistance? There weren't even supposed to be that many rabbits left by the time first squad started towards the gate. This thought makes my stomach twist and I clench my fingers in the dirt by my knees. Another signal from the lead rabbit. Then we're off again. Halfway towards the moat perhaps, but it's hard to gauge. I clench my eyes shut, then back open, fighting back the nausea, swallowing my belly and the coppery tang of my tongue. I focus only on the shadowy shapes in front of me, keeping up with them. That's all I have to do. Oh, no, 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 no. That's one of the evil rabbits. That's when a sudden blur of motion streaks across my path. I yelp and screech to a halt. So fast my feet slip out from under me and I go flat back flat on my ass oh gosh it's a rabbit one of the king's men his ears and lips curled back as he surveys a parameter sets his sights on me the growl rolling off his tongue sends tendrils of panic up through the base of my brain and i give a little whimper crawling backwards through some grass eggs i hear genzo's voice the sound of him and gidget turning around but there's no way they'll make it in time. I see the rabbit reel back, his fur standing on end, eyes wide. He lets out a shriek. Then, of course, Jerry leaps over my head and tackles him to the ground. They go tumbling, a flurry of limbs and fur. And when Jerry gains a momentary, so momentary upper hand, pinning the other rabbit to the ground, he shoots all three of us a glare. Don't just stand there! Run! I do as I'm told, scrambling to my feet and shrieking towards Genzu and Gidget. Then we're running. I just catch Jerry plunging his dagger into the other rabbit's throat with a squelch before we go barreling around the next corner. We don't stop. Racing. Racing. I look around wildly for the rest of our squad, and Gidget throws her hand out with a rough grunt to point them out. They're not, they're not stopping anymore either, and in just a moment I see why. A shriek. Another one from the wild were-rabbits. Followed by another. And another. Flash of brown fur leaping out of the shadows. Down from rooftops. Got here, there's so many of them. I thought the whole plan was supposed to let us avoid these guys. Well, there's more resistance than what's let on. And did you think we was going to go through this whole ordeal without a struggle, Genzu? Yeah, well, we couldn't. A flash in front of us. That's an Iggy. Something fuds to the ground, causing us to stop short. And I just about lose my lunch all over the grass at the site. It's one of the Iggy's. Only it's barely recognizable. Limbs half bitten off. Inside strewn like party fevers. Fever, sorry. And a giant chunk gouge out of its neck. Head hanging on by nothing more than a few stringy threads. I bring my hands to my mouth on instinct. Another flash. Great, a rabbit leaps down from the nearest roof and lands on the Iggy's body. Gooey squelch as another helping of its inner squeezing out of its limp body. Gidget whips out their dagger with a half silent curse as Genzu's uh, arms flies up between mine and the rabbit. 
that their defensive efforts prove pointless when a second thud comes from behind us and we whirl around to see another rabbit leering at us his jaws already red with blood I take a step back heart beating so loud in my chest I can barely hear the first rabbit rears back with a shriek then jumps this time the block comes from the front one of the rabbits from our squad is back leaping straight at the incoming rabbit and slamming him into the ground. Our second assailant screeches, then leaps towards them. The three of us take off as more and more screeches continue to fill the air. A thud next to us. I nearly scream, then realize it's just another one of our allies. He's already boasting a fresh strash across his arm. Dagger ready as he runs alongside us, uh, along beside us, sorry. Past more and more buildings. Some of them with fresh red stains over a stone fence. The body of one of our slain allies draped over top. No! Goodness sakes, it wasn't supposed to be like this. It wasn't supposed to be like this. Commotion to our right. I spy two enemy rabbits festering on the body of an Iggy in the shadows between the buildings. No! Iggy! One looks up as we pass and charges with a shriek. But our company ally, Rabbit, is there to block the attack. He leaps with a kick, then slams the other rabbit down into the ground, dagger plunging with a geyser of blood. I push myself faster. Faster! I can see the building start to thin, up up, so thin out up ahead and pass the darkened umbra of the moat. We're almost there. We just need to follow the moat westward to the sewers. I will more strength, more speed into my legs. The wind and exertion sending tears to my eyes and blowing my already hazy vision. Gidget veers left first. I see them pause for only a moment to check that the two of us are still following. Then continue their sprint. Genzi follows close behind. Me wiping out of a, sorry, on a slick piece of gravel right before, sorry, before writing himself a Arch! and resuming his forward velocity then me I cut the corner just a bit not caring that it takes me close to a half obscured patch of brush only worrying about not falling behind not letting any of these things catch up to me I round the corner with a twist of my heels only for the rabbit in the bush to pounce he hits me square from the side sending me flying bouncing tumbling down the path for a moment, I can't see, can't even breathe. Just running, sliding and skiddling as the gravel bites into my shoulders and arms. Then I come to a stop, head still spinning, only to see the rabbit perched over me with a hungry leer. I stare up at its wide-eyed. Then on pure instinct, reach for a retractable dagger on my belt loop and... Stab. The tip of the dagger goes in with surprising ease, and I thrust it in up on sorry, up to the hilt the fur of a rabbit's neck tickling my fingers the rabbit itself seems surprised at first but nests out a screech body wreathing backwards in pain you know you gotta cut for fright you know stop the screeching i jerk the dagger out raise it above my head for a second stab but the rabbit is ready this time and before my hands can descend it grabbed my arm with a fleshy twist nearly yanking it from its socket I let out a yelp, then open my eyes in horror as I watch the rabbit's head lunge towards my wrist. Then a visceral squelch, and my jaw drops with a silent scream. Pupils trembling, trembling, just staring, trying to comprehend the sight in front of me. His teeth are... are... through my arm. Damn it! I choke, splutter. Then finally eke out a heady groan. My fingers, my arm, my entire body shaking and twitching. Razor sharp crickle crackles of pain explode out from the point of entry. Blood bubbling up around the rabbit's teeth to leak rivers down my skin. In a panic, I attempt to yank my arm away. But the rabbit's grip is too tight. And this only makes more fire crackers explode across my vision. Genzu, Gidget! My eyes go hot with tears, my head swimming. But it's neither Genzu nor Gidget that appears. Oh, it's Jerry! It's a brown flash that launched itself at my assailant. And before I even have a chance to process it, it goes tumbling off to the side of a of rolling bodies and blood. 
Jerry slams the rabbit into the ground with an angry snap and the resulting crunch of skull that <laughs> makes my stomach royal. He turns towards me, eyes sharp. It's all I could do to stare back. Lips trembling and red soaked arm are still poised from the attack. Sheesh! Jerry whips out a streak of blood painting his chin. Then grabs my good arm and yanks me to my feet without a word. Then we're running, sprinting. I can barely keep up. He must be forcing himself to run at a more reasonable pace, but even that's too fast. And I can feel my legs struggling beneath me, my heart screaming like I'm on a treadmill turned up too high and one second from flying off. But it's not to last. There's a shriek from in front of us. And Jerry skids to a stop as another rabbit launches itself out of the shadows to block our path. I ram into Jerry from behind with a yelp, brain attempt to make heads or tails from each subsequent rapid fire development. The rabbit reels back on its haunches, then leaps. Jerry shoves me out of the way as the rabbit hits him square in the chest. They go rolling, dirt and, sorry, dirt and grass flying. But Jerry comes out on top. Of course Jerry does. Slamming the other rabbit face first into the ground before yanking his ears and sliding his dagger across his throat. See, that's where you should have aimed your dagger at, um, Iggy. But you won't have his arm issue right now. Great, another screech. A rabbit comes streaking out, for, out of the trees to the left. Then another. This one bounding up the path. It's first stained red. I back up. Back, 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 back. Great. Jerry grabs the back of my shirt and tears me out of the way as he shoves one of the incoming rabbits into the ground with a gut-wrenching thud. It all happens so fast. My stomach flies up into my throat as my legs and arms flail helplessly in the air. Blum first left, then right. Then some kind of limp ragdoll as Jerry turns towards the other rabbit. Sidestepping its hurried charge before twisting around with a kick and slamming it into the ground. Jerry doesn't wait to see if this one is down for good. He takes off. This time, tucking me in against his chest at upping speed. It's all I can do to clench my eyes shut and borrow my face into the fabric of his cloak as the ground wheezes by beneath me. We have to be almost there by now. We have to. I feel tears well up in my eyes again. The pain, panic, the sheer turmoil happening around me sending my heart and brain into continuous overdrive. The next attack surprises us both. Great. A rib crackling jolt from the right. I hear something snap inside Jerry's chest as the world goes upside down. Then we're rolling, rolling, rolling. At some point in the dizzying tumble, tumble sorry, we got separated. And I, sk and I go skidding. The rocks bite into my cheeks and my arm leaving a brilliant red streak across the gravel. I let out a haggard moan, body limp and trembling. I can't move can barely think not even as a rabbit who has sailed us turns its sights on me and comes jetting across the path i clench my eyes shut with a whimper but the attack doesn't come jerry has rolled on top of me and the charging rabbit latches onto his back instead oh my god plunges his teeth into jerry's shoulder jerry lets out a shriek of his own but doesn't move just lies there body curled over me like some kind of protective shell and I feel my heart twist. The rabbit digs his, digs his teeth in deeper, twists its head left, right, chomping down on muscle and tissue. I see Jerry wince, ears curling in pain as his arms tremble around me. No Jerry! More shrieks around us. They're all around us now, closing in. And I watch in horror as another rabbit lunges forward, its teeth chomping down around Jerry's leg. Jerry's body gives another jolt, his face contorting. But still he doesn't move, even as I hear his skin get rent between their massive teeth. He turns his gaze towards the path ahead, one eye clenched shut in agony. No, Jerry! You're almost there, Kit. He hisses, voice hurts. I follow his gaze to see the moat twist around. The grey speckle of concrete peeking out over the small hillock. The sewer. My eyes widen with a start. And I jerk back towards Jerry with a flurried shake of my head. Run and don't stop. Promise me. 
another shake. The tears are springing back to my eyes. Building panic spurt into my heart into a sorry spurring my heart into a mad gallop. Jerry lets out another grunt of surprise as a third rabbit leaps on top of him. Jaws descending on his back side. Oh my god, what a place. His arms are quaking now, barely able to keep himself aloft. But that doesn't stop him from shooting me a glare that just about drains the blood from my face. You goddamn idiot! Run! Something in this snaps me into a interaction. And with a horrid scattering of dirt and rocks and grass, I stumble out from under him and onto my feet. Run, 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 run. I don't look back. Can't look back. I half trip. Stumble forward. Sprint. Sail. Fly. I don't even notice I'm screaming until my throat gives a scratchy crack on and my lungs threaten to give out. And still I keep running. Numb feet pounding the earth. Wind lashing at my cheeks. I go tearing around a small hill. Feet sliding in dirt and dust. It's there. It's there. The large concrete embankment. The dark round hole in its side. Metal bars like giant rusted teeth. Genzu and Gidget are already there on the other side of the bars, beckoning me towards them, reaching, shouting at me, and I will everything I have into that final push. With another shriek that rattles my lungs, I fly through the bars, past the bars, slipping on the murk and going tumbling to the concrete surface. Fudge, 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 fudge. The river of black goop oozing down the center of the pipe splashes up around and around me. Sizzling sparks of pain and down my arms and searing my cheeks. So my hypothesis about Jerry earlier was wrong. I quickly roll out of it, off to the side. Limping, gasping, and just lying there in the surrounding grime. Not Jerry! For just a second, I wonder if I'm still breathing. If I'm still alive. The dizzy, dancing view of the dark, rounded walls around me. Spinning, spinning, spinning. Before finally settling into fuzzy stillness. Then Genzu and Gidget are there, their arms around me, their voices soft and scared and panicked, but there, there for me, and grounding me, and keeping the shock from fully claiming me, sorry, claiming me, even as the dank chill of the sewer seeps up into my clothes and skin. We made it. We made it. I let this thought wash over me as I close my eyes with a trembling meow. Then I lose it, and the tears begin there, Deluge down my cheeks. Deluge. Deluge. But we're in the castle, finally. Jerry! Why? You were the chosen one. You said you were going to survive this journey, not join them. We move further into the sewer before stopping to recoup. Even if the rabbits can't get through the bars, we don't have any desire to draw their attention further. And so I lean on Genzu's shoulder as we wander the length of a giant concrete conduit, careful to avoid the shallow creak of black mire bisecting its base. It eventually widens, open up into a larger square aqueduct built around a standing basin of water, clean, surprisingly, at least from what I can tell. But past it is pipe after giant pipe pumping out more and more of the same miasmatic muck from the river it lurches and sloops as it spews from the pipe and into the channel below where it forks off into another system of ducts that siphons it out of the castle it's here that we finally pause to collect our breath and our wits the acid seems to be originating from here then hmm Gidget muses as their gaze flicks around the chamber they stop to watch the acidic sludge ooze and weep through the throes. Yeah, this is definitely what you call environmentally harmful. Radioactive stuff wasn't on my bingo card for post memorified Orlum, but hey, he did have some pretty blanked up eating habits. I'm not so sure this is excrement. The pipes are everywhere jutting out from the walls, protruding from the ceiling, bubbling up from the ground, all of them churning out more and more of the stuff, funneling it out of the castle and into the river, the lake, 
the waters beyond it seems to be seeping through every inch of the place a constantly frothing poison surging within the walls stick by yourself stick by yourself i'm both shaken and yeah shaken and shaky and the pain in my wrist has turned into a dull throb that travels up the entire length of my arm Genzu helps me gently onto the lip of the basin and i sit there quietly for a moment before beginning to wash my arm the last thing i want is to be a bother to anyone it's my own ineptitude that led me to what happened if i'd only been faster if i hadn't cut that corner if i was stronger if i were i wince as a tendril of pain shoots its way up my arm the blood is gone now but the jagged gash the ripped skin it's all still there looming up at me like a reddened mar. I turn back around to see Genzer and Gidget staring at me. Only they both look quickly away, yeah, and I feel my cheeks burning j just a bit in shame. When I start tearing off a hunk of my shirt to wrap up my arm in, that's probably the wisest thing you could do, actually. If there's nothing else, then you use your own clothing to keep the blood from leaving the inside so they finally redirect their focus elsewhere. Surveying our environs in such a for way, such of a way forward, I pull the fabric tight with a grimace. It won't do much good. Already, nearly sipped blood is colouring the blue and uh, sorry, colouring blue a dark purple. That's better than nothing. And I refuse to let myself slow us down any further. Gidget grunts and points her finger towards the scene by the far wall. That's some kind of door. Seems like it. Jesus, how are we going to get up get, get up through there? Especially with... I see them turn back to look at me. Identical looks of concern knotting their brows. To which I respond with a hurried wave of my hands. I'll be fine, really. But even I know it's force. We give ourselves another ten minutes or so to ensure we're good and ready before making the climb. Despite my trepidation of what lies on the other side... I can't deny my desire to get out of a dump sewer way. My teeth are starting to chatter, and as we stand facing the first of the rise platforms, Genzu brows twist and worry. Your lips are turning goddamn blue eggs. Just a little. Cold is all. I rub at my bare arms. My clothes are exactly suited for this, kind of, this kind of environment, and the cold water I wash my arm with certainly hasn't helped. Come on, we'll be out of here soon. Exactly. Gidget gestures before pulling himself up on the platform and offering an arm out. First me, then to Genzu. Then the three of us are making our way skyward. Aside from the slick veil of slime covering everything, it's not a particularly difficult climb. But we take it slow all the same. Not keen on any more errors and judgment before we've even made it inside. At the top, Gidget gives her mossy hand holds a moment of scrutiny before saying, The hell with it! and launching himself upwards. Hold me, will you? They grunt beneath their breath. And Genzu grabs hold of their legs to keep them from falling backwards as they begin pushing and prodding at the square-shaped door overhead. It's stuck! A breathy huff, followed by another grunt. This one inaugurated as they push their hands against the grimy surface of the door. There's a grinding noise, the crack of stone on stone. Then slowly, ever so slightly, it begins to move. You got it! Keep pushing it! Just a bit further! Gidget lets out a bark of exertion, and I see the muscles of her arms trembling as they heave the heavy stone block up and out of the way. It slides with a heady groan, thick gobs of muck squishing out between the cracks as it gives way. Gidget simply gazes up at their handiwork for a moment, wiping up the sweat of their brow. Then refines their grip on sorry, grip on the handholds and pull themselves up through the newly opened hole. Come on! I hear them say before they disappear into the void. Genzu shoots me with a shrug, one brow arced, then climbs up after them and I throw one last glance out into the clammy murk of the aqueduct before following suit. Into or onto firmer ground? 
Possibly. We emerge in a world of blackness. Complete and utter darkness. To a point where I can't even see my hand in front of my face. A clatter to my left makes me jump. But it's followed up by a string of four-letter words and a grumble of exasperation from Genzu. I bet those words begin with F and ends with K. Did his royal turd nuggets not pay his electric bill or what? <laughs> I hear Genzu push himself back up to his feet with a groan. Gish's voice comes from a short distance away. We seem to be in some sort of storage room. Is there a light or something? I try reaching out. Only to be promptly not only, only to promptly knock a handful of cans off a nearby shelf. The resulting racket makes my heart leap into my chest for a second time. I'm looking. Maybe he got tired of looking at himself in the mirror and turned off the lights. Damn. Found it. A click. Then a second click. Then a rapid fire series of clicks on off on off. But the room remains shrouded in spine chilling obscurity. Light doesn't work. Brilliant deduction. <laughs> Try for the door. If we can at least get out of here. Get, off, get out of wherever this is. More clumsy searching. I try for the left only to promptly wrap my head on the corner of the box. And hear Gidget and Genzu having similar luck on the other side. A thud. Followed by a rattle. Another stream of curses from Genzu. God blank this blanking hellhole of a blank house. Then the sound of a door clicking. Ah! A creak. Gidget pulls the door open. And there's now light. And the three of us are bathed in moonlight. For just a moment, we can do nothing but stand there, staring up past the doorframe. Then Gidget places a hesitant step forward, and another, walking slowly and silently out into the hall. Are we dead? No, we are here in the castle. Okay, folks, I think this is where we are going to end off this particular episode. Jerry! I'm just going to keep saying that throughout the entire playthrough of this game. Jerry, no! Why did Jerry have to die? He was the chosen one out of all the rabbits to survive, and yet this happened? I don't know anymore. Thank you all so much for watching, everybody. Phase 2, 3 of the plan is underway, but... It looks like the ra our rabbits, our ally rabbits and Iggy's, well, they're all left behind and they're probably all going to die. But thank you all so much for watching, everyone. No journey is without sacrifice. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, everyone.